A few weeks ago I traveled to Lego's headquarters in Billen, Denmark and was amongst the first people to be able to see first hand lots of upcoming releases, with one of them being Lego Icon's Dune Ornithopter. Here's what the designer had to say about it. My name is Mike, I'm a <coughs> model designer at Lego. Um, I know some of you. Okay, so I'm going to show you something I've been working on for two years. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. I'll tell you what it is. I hope you can oh. I recognize it. Uh, this is Dune. Dune, nice, good. I'm glad some of you know what it is. This is a Dune ornithopter. Um, not based on the original 1984 movie. I'm sorry for those of you that were excited for that, but this is uh, based on the 2021, what we see in the 2021 movie which we're very much looking forward to the sequel that's coming out in a few months' time. And we've been working really closely with the studio to develop this model. I'm just going to show you a little bit of what we've included here. So we have a cast of characters, Dr. Kynes, we have Duke Leto Atreides, Lady Jessica, uh, Paul Atreides, Gurney Halleck, Chani, and then Duncan Idaho. And then this was our original cast of characters, and the whole time we were developing the model, we just kept talking about wouldn't it be so cool to include the Baron. So, of course, we've also included the Baron Harkonnen. He probably doesn't need to be with an ornithopter, but you really need the Baron when you start talking about Dune. So, I think it's a great cast of characters, but then we also have this model. Um, this is a little bit different than anything I've worked on before. It's very, like high on the functionality. We actually started making this model working on the functions. Right after we saw the movie for the first time, uh, a, group of, a group of other designers and I, back in September of 2020, we were like, I wonder if we could make one of those ornithopters and Lego bricks. Uh, that's actually my favorite part of the whole Dune universe, is the ornithopters. And I remember reading the book just wondering, like, what do these things look like? And the way that they were executed in the movie, I just think is incredible. So. Uh, we were trying to be as faithful to what we saw in the movie as we could, so we have the wings that can deploy by flipping this lever here, and then you can lift it up, and there's actually this button on the back, and you can oh, circle wow. them all. Um, but for me, the coolest feature of all is actually the landing legs. So there's a knob here, so as you turn this, they all fold up together, and then it can go flying around. And then my favorite thing to do is, in the, if anyone remembers the movie, there's a scene where um, Leto flies out to the to. Uh, observed the spice harvesting for the first time and they realize they're, that the crew of the spice harvester needs to be saved so they're like trying to figure out what to do and they go into, they like go into this dive so he pulls all the wings in and goes into this dive and then like swoops out of it right by the ground and it's we've been playing with this thing so much it's really really fun to play with um, and I'm not going to embarrass myself with making my swooshing sounds but maybe you'll catch me doing that later. Because the function kind of takes up so much of the interior we haven't been able to re recreate the entire interior of the vehicle but you can open up the front cockpit on either side and then uh, we have this little tray that you can take out here and then you can take just two characters and put them in. So the scale of the model is like roughly 1 to 35, I would say, something like that. It's a little bit hard to say because for the movie they made real life props that they would use for shooting, but then all of the wings are added digitally and even sections of the tail are added digitally. So what is real and what is digital in the movie is very hard to uh, discern where that split happens and so we're kind of basing basing our model both on the physical props that they built for the movie but then also on a lot of digital reference that they gave us so 135 is not like don't write that in stone or anything but it's pretty close and I think it looks pretty good with many figures in it so we also for this model we developed two new elements so this new blade piece this was actually this was the driving force not driving force, but like the thing that drove the whole size of the model. We we were originally just playing around with like, okay, let's make this ornithopter. And I said, I'm gonna need a really big wing. And I asked our engineers, um, like, how big of a wing can you make? And they said, how big of a wing do you want? So, like, <laughs> so, of course, I said it, 40 modules. Um, and they said, okay, they could do that. Uh, which then I felt like I should have asked for bigger. But in the end, 40 modules is a super challenging wing to make. Um, it's a little bit different than the, than the wings that you see in like, or the, the rotor blades that you see in a Technic helicopter. So this is just a single molded material because we want it to be super light uh, because this, this function is like taking so much energy, um, so much force, and we didn't want it to be too crazy. So uh, yeah, it's a slightly different design. And I know it probably looks very similar, but the, so that's about eight modules longer than what you see on the big Technic helicopters. And then we also developed a new uh, cockpit piece here for the front. We spent a lot of time trying to figure out, the, the, the front is kind of like the face of the ornithopter, if you imagine it based on a, 
uh, dragonfly, then this is like the head, and we thought we really want to get all the details in this section right. Not only do we want to get it to look right, but we want it to be great to build and great to play with. So we decided we needed a new element to achieve that, to have the right stability and also the right shapes. So we made this new cockpit piece. I hope it will remind you of the original uh, Jedi Starfighter cockpit from like 2002, I guess. I love that piece so much. But it was it, it had like a bubble uh, a bubble top. Um, this one is still test molded element, so you see some weird uh, sink marks and stuff, but the final one should be really good. Um, yeah, and we're taking advantage of our uh, new, I don't know the name of it. Does anyone know the official name of it? Trans Black. Um, we, when we were, went, and that was actually being developed while we were developing this model, and I was a little bit internally, and I know I should say this, but I was a little bit opposed to, the, to making the new Trans Black. I thought the one that we have is pretty good. And then the studio showed me references of this vehicle and they were showing me the glass color and I was like, oh shoot, that's exactly the new trans black color that we're making. So I'm actually quite happy with how it works on this model. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Mike. Mike, is it just a coincidence that it's like super swooshable adult hand size? Because um, you mentioned that you used the blades the starting point, but it seems like it's almost like a, a toy scale for adults to play with. Um, I don't know how to answer that question. I mean, the, when, when we were when we were first playing around with the function, we were like, we want something that we can pick up and fly around and play with. Because even if we say that we're making Lego models for adults, they should still be toys. Like we want, we want. I don't know about you guys, but like I, I want to pretend like I'm an adult, but sometimes I still like to play with my Lego models. So, uh, yeah, we thought like it's. Part of what makes the Ornithopter so cool is its functionality and its ability to like to fly and transform and all this stuff. So if we can't get all that, then we we don't really have as a compelling of a product. But did you consider doing any kind of like display base or environment that it could be set in or even a stand? Originally, we considered some display bases, but this goes back to just my view on Lego bricks. I don't think I've ever actually made a display base in a model. I just don't care for them. I mean, I understand why people want to put things on display and pose, but for me, this is like, this is a toy to be played with. Um, and I also, now I'm going to get super controversial. Like, my dream for the end of a Lego set is that it gets taken apart and turned into something else. And I think that a stand goes a little bit against that. So I'm partial to not having stands. That's why we spent quite a lot of time to like make sure that this landing gear is quite stable, so it should actually pose quite well just sitting on its own feet. What is the amount of Technic pieces in the model approximately? Because it has so much functionality that it should be a lot. Uh, I, I knew that at one point. <laughs> <laughs> I will look at, I will go back to my computer, I'll look it up, and come and ask me an interview, and I'll tell you. Uh, it's close to 1,400 elements overall, and I want to say probably at least 500 of them are Technic. Um, nice. the, the whole core here is quite a lot of Technic stuff to make the wings work. The, the, the big thing we were playing with is how do, we, how do we make these so they can, you know, flap a lot of times and then not pull off. Um, so, and, and then also the folding is just, it's, I've never made anything like that. We, I think we made at least 20 or 30 different versions through development of that function. Um, and then we realized what kind of space we needed to fit it in, so then we made another 15. So. <laughs> It was uh, quite a process. That's when the presentation ended and unfortunately I wasn't able to get a one-on-one -on -one interview with Mike, but I did get fantastic opportunities to interview other designers for other upcoming releases. So keep an eye out for that.